Right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Um, so uh, again, my name is Jerry Lee, the life science specialist in ARC. Uh, today, we will continue our topic in uh, obtain a container and use it to build a reproducible workflow. Um, so um, today we have my colleague, um, Jeff Gardner, um, George Parker, and Nick Rocklin um, join us uh, to help and answer the questions. Before we start, uh, we would like to acknowledge that University of British Columbia, both campuses are located on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of Musqueam people and Acidix people. So um, yesterday we talked about the uh, what the container is and what the um, container container um, is and how people can benefit from it. Um, and we um, showed some examples of using prebuilt obtainer container and um, to uh, run the program um, in Sokai. So today um, is actually more important, uh, which is uh, to make a custom obtainer container or edit the prebuilt uh, container and try to put install program, um, change the configurations in inside the container. So uh, again, we have some useful links in this slide, like the uh, homepage of Aptainer, our TUD, and um, the documentation, and also the um, Docker Hub. So if you, are, um, if you want to find some links, you can uh, probably um, look at this slide. Okay. So, um, we mentioned this in uh, yesterday, but I want to emphasize again that uh, as uh, the main pain point as the uh, HPC high performance computing user is that you uh, we don't have the uh, root access, we don't have pseudo privilege. Um, so to install a program, uh, it may it can be very complicated. Um, but the container can help you to do that and how to do it uh, is uh, mainly um, will be touched today because uh, today we'll, we'll talk about how to install a program in, in, inside the container. So as the container is, uh, you can treat it as a um, mini operation system, but it's, it must be Linux um, distribution. Um, however, this Linux di distribution could be uh, same or different from the host operating system. So in Sockeye, we use uh, CentOS 7. Um, can, you can build a container um, uh, with Ubuntu CentOS 6 or CentOS 8. It, uh, it's up to you, but it must be, it cannot be Windows or um, Mac OS. Um. Yes. Uh, yeah, WSL, um, you, you can install um, Aptainer in WSL. It's almost the full version of, um, uh, of uh, Ubuntu. Yeah, you can even uh, install the GUI uh, um, like graphic uh, interface uh, in, the, uh, in WSL. So you can, you, you can open Chrome, <laughs> for example, <laughs> from there. So you, you can have two versions. And actually, if you are using Sockeye, um, I would recommend you use WSL if your laptop is in uh, Windows, because um, to use Sockeye, if you are not in um, UBC campus, you have to connect to uh, MyVPN. Um, but with WSL, you can install uh, MyVPN there and only con connect to MyVPN within WSL, which won't affect uh, your Windows connection. So your window is still using your um, home network, for example. Um, so, um, okay, so let's start from the um, example um, yesterday. Um, we downloaded this bioconductor, if you remember, um, just do module load, obtainer, and then module uh, obtainer pull from the Docker Hub. We just need to copy and paste the uh, command you found in Docker Hub and do a little bit change. Um, and then you can get this um, 
dot zip file, which uh, is not touchable. Um, you cannot add it. Of course, you can delete this this file, but if you want to change something inside the file, you need to uh, use a specific way. Uh, with the zip file, you can run some uh, R script. Uh, for example, here, uh, you can put this code uh, in an R script and then run it by R script um, space test.r. Um, so that, so this script works because all of the commands or, uh, or libraries um, in, used by this script has already been installed in, um, in this container. But if you don't have the contain, uh, if you don't have some package uh, in the container, you you need to install the package uh, in either inside or outside the container. Uh, yesterday we showed uh, we showed you how to install it outside the container, and today we're going to um, install it inside the container. Okay, so no questions. Should be. Okay, let me move this to make it smaller and open the terminal. Okay, so to edit the container, um, close the window. Um, so now I'm in a folder. Uh, part two, uh, if you remember, we have part, we have this bioconductor uh, container in part one. So I'm going to copy, uh, copy it from part one. Okay, now we have this bioconductor folder. Um, if you want to edit this, um, zip file, you need to do um, the format conversion first to change the format from CIF, which is which stands for uh, singularity image format, and change this CIF to a sandbox, which is a folder. So uh, you can do, uh, first of all, I need to load Actainer. Typo, sorry. Okay, um, and then what you can do is do obtainer build um, dash dash sand box. Um, this um, flag means you are going to create a sandbox and you can, um, let, let's call it bioconductor version one dot sandbox. And then this, this is the output. So this sandbox is output and the input can be either Docker I mean, either this guy, which we uh, the do the container in the Docker Hub, or if you already have the zip file, you can just do put it here, and don't forget to add fake root here. So just pretend you are a root user. Okay, so now it starts to convert. Um, the format, it might take a, uh, might take a few minutes. So let me connect to Sokai again. Yeah, because the file is pretty large, so um, let's 
see. So we have Okay, so now I have this file version one sandbox already converted. Uh, so it, this will be done later, but uh, we're going to just, to just use the one I pre-converted. Pre um, uh, sandbox takes a long time to build. Could you use some kind of cache? Uh, if, you if you download, um, the the downloaded file can use some uh, use the cache, but the converting, um, as you can see, I <laughs> I converted already, and but but if I want to convert it again, then it still um, takes a lot of time to generate the files because it's kind of unzip. Uh, you can treat it as un unzip um, because the zip file is a uh, is a single file and everything is inside. And if you want to open it and generate a folder uh, with all of the files um, stored inside, then you kind of unzip the file, those files and folders from the zip file. So if you uh, if you try to build the sandbox from the Docker Hub, then um, the downloading part can use the cache. Okay, so. So this is the sandbox. And if you, you can see it's a directory, uh, it's the blue color and it, there's a letter D in the front. So it's a directory. So you can actually go inside. And if you go inside, you can see there's a, um, bin folder, um, ETC, home. Uh, of course, inside this home, you won't have, um, for example, my username, it just have the username created by, um, by the developer. So it's a, basically it's a standard um, Ubuntu um, root um, directory. Uh, it has uh, almost everything. Um, Okay, so if you want to build it, uh, something inside, uh, the best way is first to um, go outside of the con container and then use app container share. Uh, you can, do... so this command will help you to get into the container, uh, though it is now a sandbox format. Um, However, to edit, you need to add dash dash writable and also the fake root. Did I copy? Oh, I didn't load. <laughs> This is the new window. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Tony. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I'm inside. If you uh, you can see my uh, directory now is slash root. Um, if you echo home. And it's actually slash root. So sometimes you, uh, you might need to be more um, careful that uh, where, whether these uh, environment variable is um, defined in the um, container or not. So different container has different settings. Uh, you better to uh, double check. Okay. Uh, if you want to edit something, for example, if I want to uh, create a new folder, uh, for example, my Jerry home. So uh, if you are familiar with Linux, then you probably know that this slash um, means root 
directory. If I do this outside of the container, I will get an error because I'm not the system admin. I cannot touch the root, uh, root directory, but I'm now inside the container. So this slash doesn't mean the um, root directory in Sockeye. It means the root directory in this container. So if I go to cd slash and then um, list all of the files and folders, you can see um, the, fo the Jerry home, uh, this folder uh, I just created is there. So if you want to um, install a program, uh, let's see whether it's the theme. Uh, so you can see if I want to go to Jerry home, and if I want to create a text, um, text file, text.txt, uh, it tells me uh, Vim is not found because in this uh, obtainer, um, there's no Vim um, installed. So, what we can do is just do um, as if you search in Google, since it's Ubuntu, and you can update, do apt update. And you can see, um, usually if you are using a, a laptop that running uh, that are running in uh, Linux, uh, when you do apt update, you need to put sudo in front but within the uh, Aptainer container, you don't do that. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't recognize sudo. It will report errors. You just need to just forget uh, sudo. You just do anything uh, um, command without, any command without sudo. So now I want to install Vim. Should be pretty quick. It's slower than I expected. Oh, I guess maybe because the um, this is bigger than the light version of Ubuntu. Okay, so let me see whether this is done. Uh, it's still converting. Yeah, as you can see, it takes some time um, to generate, but if it's a uh, um, it depends on how big the container uh, image file is. If it's smaller, then it would be quick quicker. If it's larger and has lots of files, then it will be slower. Oh, um, okay. So now we have an arrow here. So this arrow is. Uh, I'm not to be honest. I don't know whether it's related to the container itself, or um, it's, it's because um, Aptainer has a bad compatible with it. But what we can do, you just need to remember that. Um, did I put it in the slide? Let me see. Okay. Um, what we can do is there are two commands you can um, can help you to resolve this issue. So uh, I found this uh, error um, in lots of uh, containers that use Ubuntu's um, operating system, including the official one. Um, it looks like the um, this program this tool. Um, libc uh, dash bin is broken. So what we need to do is just um, reinstall. Okay, I, yeah, so, and then do this again. So now it's, it's done. And uh, I'm going to copy this code to command to the, to the chat box so everybody can have it. Um, 
So sometimes it doesn't work um, that smoothly. Um, yeah, there could be um, some errors. It may be uh, because of the container itself or how people um, build the container. Because um, if you um, pull down the Ubuntu light version from um, Docker Hub, and that is only 25 uh, megabytes. Um, if you build everything from there, then you actually inherit all problems from that container. So. I guess that's why uh, lots of containers have this same issue. Um, but since this came, uh, so if you see any other um, issues, you can just Google search how to resolve it. Or uh, if you don't know, uh, pre uh, you're welcome to um, reach out to us and we will try our best to help. Okay, so now we have them. So let's do... Now you can see um, it works. Okay, now if I close the container and and log in again, and then go to Jerry home, so you can see it's there. And then if you, if I list the, <coughs> excuse me, if I list the files, you can see the text at uh, test.txt, which I just created um, is also there. So if I do, <coughs> So if I do a uh, VI, then you can see the program is also installed, which means you can use it. Oh. So now um, it's a very simple example of how to <coughs> install the program uh, in a container and how to create the folders, uh, create the files and edit the files. Um, and you can, you can um, edit the a container, uh, which ha already has lots of programs installed, or you can start from scratch by uh, doing obtainer build uh, sandbox. So if you want to start from scratch, you can do this, like uh, build a sandbox with fake root, uh, generate a sandbox named ubuntu.sandbox, and then from grab the image file from Docker Hub. Um, okay, so the sandbox is the uh, is a folder. It's uh, it's kind of um, um, editable version of uh, the container. So. Let's see. Mm. So now we um, already have that. Part two. Okay, so I have a zip file which can pull, which it was pulled down from um, from Docker Hub. So this is a single file, um, and I generated a sandbox based on this file. So this sandbox is a folder. So you can see it's a directory. It's a, there's a D here, meaning that it's a folder. Um, the contents between these two are the same. However, if you want to edit the container, you must go with sandbox. 
you can you can think that this zip version is a zipped uh, version of this sandbox. After zipping the sandbox into SIF, you won't be able to touch anything inside. So if you want to change any something, uh, you have to convert it back to the sandbox. Does that make sense? So basically, if you want to install a program inside a container, you have to um, get a sandbox first. And what, what I uh, did um, was just go into the sandbox by um, obtain a shell, dash dash writable, meaning that I want to edit the sandbox and then use fake root and then the, the sandbox name. So after running this command, I'm inside the sandbox. That's how I got, um, and there I created, not, not here. <laughs> So, okay, I can do this again. Probably that makes it uh, easier. So now I'm um, going into the sandbox. Uh, you can, if I list the root directory, you can see there are a bunch of folders. Uh, there's a home, uh, init, mount, mount, mount um, or any folders, if I want to do some editing, so all of these folders are inside the sandbox. If I want to change it, for example, if I want to create a new new uh, folder um, called my home or home one. Thank you. So you can see there's a home Jerry created. And inside, if I go inside the home Jerry, and create a new file like task.txt. And I just created a new file. And if I exit, so if I do the same thing, for the SIF file. So for example, if I change the sandbox to bioconductor, takes more time. Okay, so if I list, the folder, you can see there's no home Jerry. Okay, so, um, and in the same in the SIF file, I cannot install the program. I cannot use uh, APT install. I cannot um, create folders. So that's the difference. If you want to edit something inside the container, convert it to sandbox and then convert it back. So that's the idea. Okay, so um, here is one example. Um, it generate a sandbox file conversion once um, sandbox from the Docker Hub uh, uh, bioconductor site, and then uh, share into this sandbox with a writable and fake root turn on, and then uh, in R uh, you. Open R, install package ggprod2, quit, and exit. So after doing this step three, uh, we already install this new R package inside the sandbox. Okay, so for example, if we do um, if we um, do R and install the package 
log two. You can see it will the package will be installed in this user local lab R site library, which is the default version, uh, default path of our package. And this path is actually located inside the container. Uh, Oh, well, thanks, Jeff. Um, so sandbox is not a command, it's, uh, it's a folder. Um, so it's the folder, um, it's a, you can treat it as a format of a container, um, but this format is, uh, looks like a folder. Um, you, you use Aptainer to create the sandbox. Uh, so sandbox itself is not an uh, is not a tool. So uh, now we have um, GG Pro two, and oh, it's installed in the sandbox. And if I want to convert it back, I can do root. Uh, version one, um, ggplot2, for example, set. So, obtain a build, the output is this, and the input is the sandbox. Um, so, so the, basically, this is the life cycle of your uh, container. You um, create a sandbox either from a zip file or the Docker Hub, then shell into it, try to install program or try to edit the files or folders you want. And then after you do this, quit from the sandbox and convert it to zip file. Um, if you if you want to like do more testing and you, uh, of course, you can hold and don't convert it to a uh, zip file because with Sandbox, you still can run the uh, run the obtainer, uh, run the tools inside. Uh, but if you want to make a frozen version, um, nobody can touch. And if you want to share this version, um, share this container with others or uh, transfer this uh, zip file, uh, transfer this container to other platform like from Sockeye to Cedar, then um, it's better to not uh, do that in sandbox format. Uh, it's better to convert it to zip file first. Uh, any other use of sandbox other than storing the packages? Uh, let me. I, I didn't I didn't think about this <laughs> to be honest. Uh, the the most uh, important um, goal of uh, sandbox is uh, help you to edit the container. So uh, of course you don't need to install packages. You can install Python, the tools, or you can uh, edit the files. So um, for example, if your um, if your tool need a, uh, some database, and you can put them inside the uh, the the container inside the sandbox and convert it, but we usually um, try to uh, make the sandbox as smaller as possible. So, uh, if you want, you can uh, just copy some files, as Jeff said, uh, into sandbox and for longer um, storing. Uh, because uh, when you convert a sandbox back to SIF. Um, nobody can touch the zip file. So uh, it's pretty safe unless you delete the zip file. Otherwise, um, any file inside uh, will be protected. So uh, let me, let's waiting. Okay, so you can see the, um, this is done and I'm going to use this, this window for the, um, next topic. Um, 
Okay, so uh, after you edit the sandbox, if you want to use the tools or package, you, uh, you may want to convert it back. Uh, but sometimes uh, you may encounter some issues when you try to install the program. For example, um, if I do obtainer shell write, writable, and uh, to build first, sorry. Move the to save the time. I just move the one to here. Now we have now we have um, version two sandbox. And let's see whether I have this. So now I'm trying to uh, share into this version two bioconductor sandbox with uh, fake root and editing mode. So I open R and the library library you can see um, so this is a, a library that I used for uh, bioinformatics um, but you can see it's not in store and if you want to install you can do bulk manager so So this guy is not installed. It's install the bio manager first. Okay, if I go back to um, so if I go to bioconductor and copy paste. Oh. Okay. It's going to install the bulk manager in the um, in inside the container. Okay. Now I can do Can remember all of the. Okay, so oh, make it bigger. Okay, um, when you install it, sometimes you may encounter some issues. So you can see it, it's. Um, okay, I'm going to stop here. Okay, so it says fatal error stddf.h is not. Uh, no such file or directory. Um, so this is a header file if you, some people are familiar with it. And what the um, program is doing um, is to use GCC to compile this uh, compile the package from the source code. And um, the, the directory it looks for the header file is here, user local lab, are include or user local include. Um, so however, if you want to we have this file. Okay. Good. So if I want to find 
is STDDEF H. Oh. So if it, uh, if I go to the um, the root directory and look for the files, uh, it takes a lot of a lot of time. But this is how I did it. So um, I'm going to stop here. But um, the reason it. Um, I encountered this error is that these two places um, don't, don't have this header file. Um, instead, this header file is located um, in user lab gcc x86. version 11, and if I see, and include. So you can see the std, uh, tddef dot h is there. Um, so in basically the program is trying to look for something, but the, um, the container has it, but it's, it was installed in some other places. Um, this is like uh, when you use Windows, you will have um, a, pro uh, a folder called program files or program files um, brackets x86. So sometimes your, um, your software is installed in program file, but sometimes in the other one. And um, this happens, it's kind of a history issue uh, when the system is up upgraded, then they might change some default file uh, paths for some of the files. And this is the case. Um, so we are using a pretty um, re recent version of Ubuntu. But what we are trying to install, uh, uh, the, the Python package is called dsec. If you um, look at the date, it should be 10 years ago. <laughs> Um, so I can see it's 2014. Um, so so um, this can happen in, in um, when you do research, right? So some, some tools are, are pretty old. Um, and that time, this header file is installed in these two um, file paths. But now, in nowadays, it's storing, uh, it's, it's stored in a different, um, different directory. So, <clears throat> so the um, in short, uh, what I want to say is that when you um, encounter some issues like the file is not no such file or directory, you probably want to use this find to search for it first. Um, probably it's um, uh, it's it's over there. Just so what we can do um, for this case is simply. Just copy all of the files to user local lib r include. And this is can be done. This can be done in the uh, when you turn on the writable mode. Okay, so now if I go to file conductor in store again, 
it should work. <clears throat> So now it's uh, running the same command again, but it doesn't report an error anymore. Um, keeps compiling. So that's at least we so resolve this this issue. We may have other issues, but this um, this one has, uh, has been resolved. Okay. So <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, all of these details have been listed in the uh, in the slides. Um, uh, it, if you um, want to find the, um, those details, you can check the slides for, um, for them. Okay, so that's how um, you edit the container and install the program. Uh, of course, you can um, start from scratch by um, do obtainer build sandbox. And this is the output and this is the input. Uh, you can do Ubuntu, you can do send, send OS, it, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's up to you. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but one thing you need to remember is that if you are using um, Docker Ubuntu or Docker send OS, these two uh, images are very, very light version of the uh, operating system. It basically has almost nothing inside. Um, you have to, um, install a lot of stuff. It's done. Um, you have to install a lot of stuff before you can use it. Um, even um, if you want to uh, install some other program, you have to um, install um, all of these um, essential packages. Okay, so, um, okay, so here uh, I list the scripts. Uh, for you, uh, for your reference, uh, for example, you need to update the apt, update the apt get uh, if it's Ubuntu, and you need to uh, install some program like wget vim, and install this build essential, uh, which has lots of uh, packages and libraries. Um, so it should have uh, most of the stuff, and uh, I'm not go going to run it. Um, but uh, if you encounter any uh, errors, for example, this is what we um, saw. This uh, libc bin is is not um, this libc bin uh, is not uh, installed properly in this Ubuntu container. Uh, what well, what you need to do is just run these two commands inside the container, and then it should work. Um, okay. Um, questions. Can you build from scratch like def? Yes, you can. Uh, so uh, I don't want to include that because that can make things more complicated. Uh, if you want to check, for example, um, so you the I can forward the um, documentation. Uh, the obtainer documentation is very uh, well written. So. You can just Google Google um, obtainer definition files, and the first link is it. Um, there are some um, examples, and you can just copy and paste. Um, so it, there are lots of um, there are lots of um, examples here, and also a very detailed description. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the Docker file, I haven't found a way to convert it directly. Um, yeah, I'll keep on um, looking that. Um, because my, um, yeah, we're using the, um, the high performance computing, which doesn't have the, the Docker installed. So we have to use other uh, platform to, to, do, do, to do the testing, maybe in the cloud. Uh, but uh, once we found the way, I can. Uh, I think I have your email. Um, I can email you guys. Um, okay. Are there any talks on Arc about next flow usage with that? 
uh, unfortunately, we don't have that. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out um, and we can take a look because, you know, um, it's not very, um, the, sometimes the different people can ask very different questions. So uh, with a specific um, tool, um, it's not very easy to generate a uh, um, universal documentation for that. Uh, except this tour is not, it could, could cover lots of di different disciplines. Uh, is there anything that Sif, oh, uh, plus writable sandbox can do, but building from a definition file? Uh, you can you can build a sandbox from the definition file. You just need to um, make the de definition file ready. For example, the, uh, what is the source, what, what is the bootstrap, what is uh, the run script, what is the, um, the dependencies. So all of these, uh, you, you just copy the example and fill uh, the um, packages or fill the contents you, um, you want. And then you can do um, obtain a build. And uh, I, I can't remember which flag you are using, but you can reach from, you just need to input the, the definition file. You can build from there. Um, so that's how, actually how we, um, and also you can generate the definition file from the obtainer. Um, it will create uh, automatically, uh, not automatically, it, will, it can be created by a sing, sing, single line command. Um, I can forward the link. So this is the link. All of the um, these can be found there. Uh, it's pretty well written. Uh, I have just tried making the Docker container from my local, then upload to Docker Hub and use the format you should. Um, and it seems to work fine. Uh, if it's uh, I don't, I'm not sure whether it's private or, uh, oh, you mentioned Docker Hub should be, but I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I don't know either. Um, yeah, let, let me, let me take a look and see whether, uh, which one is the best way to convert the, um, uh, the Docker to, um, obtain a container. Um, if you can do that locally without an even internet, then that would be great. Right. Um, okay, so before we leave, one last thing I want to share with you guys is that I put some, um, put an example of installing Condor here. So you can just follow this script to, um, uh, this recipe to install uh, Condor inside the container. Um, this is very useful uh, if you want to install something in CETA because CETA doesn't like Condor. Um, if your program uh, is more convenient in Condor or it uh, can only be installed in Condor, this is the way you in install Condor and install the environment, uh, create the environment uh, in the obtainer container. Uh, and then convert it to zip file because zip file is only one file. So it doesn't have the um, issue of lots of file numbers. Um, so that's how, uh, that's how you uh, use Condor in um, Cedar. And when you use Condor in container, you may want to look at, um, So you may want to go to the root directory in the in the obtainer container. And if you uh, look down and here you see a singularity soft link pointing to dot singularity dot D slash run script. And, and this place is actually where all of the execute executable uh, files are located. So if I go to this um, this folder, and if I go to action, you can see shell ex, uh, exec execute run 
start are all here. Um, I didn't find it in the documentation. I don't know, maybe I, um, I didn't do a good job in searching, but uh, this is how I found. Um, this is what I found uh, in, uh, in the Aptainer container. So this could be very useful if you want to um, make it automatically run something. For example, uh, if I open exec, oh, I have that. Okay, cat. So you can see it's just a simple bash script. And what it does is just scan all of the um, shell scripts in this directory. So if you want to automatically run something, for example, if you have a counter and you install something in the counter environment, you need to first initiate the counter. And then you need to counter activate the environment before you use the tool. So you can put all of these command in this script before that. So for example, if I put an echo hello world here, every time when I run Aptainer exec, this container, it will print the hello world um, before, any, uh, before the um, tool, tools I call. So um, if you have, uh, it, 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 it just like a run script, if you start the container and then it will load this command and run this commands automatically. So that, that's the last thing I want to share with you guys. Uh, is there any other questions? Uh, to make some, is there a reason to go by? Oh, I, I saw Jeff already answer. Okay, so uh, if there's no more question, uh, we will um, say goodbye to everyone and then try to convert, um, get the recordings. Um, then um, email everyone. We may uh, get back to you for the surveys and see uh, what, uh, what um, workshops you, uh, uh, you would like us to, um, to do uh, in the future. Um, so thank you in advance uh, for the surveys and uh, we will also notify everyone if uh, the recordings is available. Thank you and enjoying the afternoon. <laughs>